Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to do another quick tip in Orca. We're going to be talking about filament changes. Uh, and I want to thank tonight's sponsor of this video, Fictive.com, a digital manufacturing and engineering company. And we're going to get into a little bit more of them later on. So this video was a request from Adam. Uh, and one of the other uh, videos, he dropped a comment asking for a filament change and M600 uh, tips and some uh, deep dive stuff. So Adam, thanks for the suggestion. I really appreciate it. Uh, this one's for you. Um, <clears throat> so this one is was a little bit of a head scratcher at first. Um, not coming from like Prusa Slicer or even Bamboo Studio or, you know, Slick 3R. Um, you know, I think if you're coming from one of those, this is probably not going to be a big departure from what you're used to. If you're coming from the Cura world or Idea Maker world, uh, it's a wholly different process, at least old school Cura. I don't even know how they do it now, but Idea Maker for sure, uh, it's totally different. But that being said, um, once you figure it out, it's actually pretty straightforward. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about like the easy button stuff first, how to set it up, how to configure it, how to get it all going with, let's say, you know, two different colors of PLA on the same part. Uh, and then after that, then we'll talk about some of the little tweaks and tunes that you can do um, depending on which uh, filament and what your preferences are as far as filament go. So here we go. We got a blank plate here, nothing on it, uh, nothing up my sleeve. We're just gonna go ahead and add a primitive. I'm gonna add this cube. I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. Actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, we'll leave it right where it is. Um, the only minor change, and there's actually two ways you can do this. This is probably the preferred and kind of the easiest way to do it. Up here in your printer, if you click on the edit presets button next to it, and you're on the machine G code tab, what you'll want to do, depending on what flavor of firmware you're running, is add your filament change G code here. So I am running plain Jane Marlin in a, in a rack of Ender 3s, right? Uh, so under three? Yeah, under three. Good God, I got confused for a second between under two and under three. Um, so under threes, anything that's crowded, anything running Marlin basically, right? You're going to dump in an M600 code. Now, if you're running Clipper, you're running some other, some other type of firmware, you'll want to check and see what your G code is for that flavor of firmware that you're running. But if you're running Marlin, you're pretty safe at M600 to just dump it in here. And if once you do that, you come up here, you hit save, You've done you're good to go from that perspective nothing else you need to do you've got a uh, chances are you've got a generic pla or pet g whatever you use and you've got that already selected here and then what you would go through is go ahead and to uh, tweak all of your quality your strength your speed supports whatever you want to do tweak all of that and get it ready to go once you've got that set all you need to do is come up here to filament section and hit this plus now you've automatically dumped in another uh generic pla right it basically just copies whatever you have over here now you do have these little color icons here next to them so that you can sort of graphically, you know, uh, graphically show the different colors of filament that you might want to do. So in this case, I did a little cube and the base was gray and the top was red. So I went ahead and changed that over to red. Uh, and then simply come over here and slice the plate. Now you'll see, essentially, it's all gray, right? I'm all the way up at the top. It's all gray here. And it's calling out the first filament, right? That's all it's doing at this point. So what you need to do is just roll up and down and you need to decide where you want to place that, uh, where you want to do your filament change. So I'm going to just go ahead and pick it right here. And then you're going to want to hover over the little plus, right click. And there's actually two ways to do it. The probably the easier way is just to say change filament and doink filament two. Now you can see we need to reslice the plate take that into account. And if we come all the way up, so now you can get a graphical representation of how and where and why it's all going to go. The other way real fast is theoretically, if you right click on here and I, ha I have, this is this one I have not tried just so you know, uh, I'm going to go ahead and X that. But what I'm going to do is reslice the plate, come back here to the X. I'm going to right click and say, add custom G code. So if you, if you don't want to go change your printer profile and add the M600 for whatever reason, and you want to add, so you have the option to add your M600 right there. So it's really doing the same thing, right? But it's, you're not going to get the graphical representation of the two different colors here in this slice. It's just basically going to say, hey, you've inserted a piece of custom G code at this spot. So if you come up and down, you can see the little G. That signifies that I've got custom G code in this slice. Now, I put in M600, so it's going to run through its 
motions. And when it gets to that layer, it's going to process the M600 command. It's going to move over. It's going to beep at me until I change my filament out and then press the button to, to resume it, right? Um, versus the other way that we did it, which was, let's go ahead and X that. And if we go ahead and do the slice plate again, and we just right click and hover over and say, change filament, we slice again, right? I've essentially done the same thing. You just get a better graphical representation here. There is a little, uh, when you, when you add the M600 up here in the printer profile, uh, in your presets, um, I think the only other thing, like weird thing to note, and it's not even that weird. Um, I just don't do tons of filament changes, but when you turn on the printer, right? Load in your, your, um, your SD card and run the print. It goes through its normal homing sequence and all that stuff starts to heat up the nozzle. And then immediately it, it pops up and initiates its first M600 command. So it assumes you don't have any filament in there. So if you have filament in there, it basically backs it out, starts to beep at you. You feed it back in your first coloring, in my case, the gray, feed back in the gray, hit pause, does the first layer, pops up, does the next M600 command. I swap it out with red, blah, blah, blah. Right, so that's the only oddball thing, and that's not really odd. It's just a function of where it's placing the M600s. So that is really the the easy mode thing, right? What we talked about: add it into the to the G code, come over here in the slicer, do your pluses, bickety bam, you're done. Um, next step is let's talk about some of the, like the little tweaks that you can do based on the number, based on which filaments you're using, and all that good stuff. Before we jump into that, I do want to take a break and talk a little bit about our sponsor. Do you have parts you need to make that are outside of your current capabilities? Or are you finally ready to level up that part that you've been making in your garage and you need a fast and reliable manufacturing partner? Then you need to consider using Fictive. Fictive has a super easy process to upload and quote your parts, whether you need CNC machining, 3D printing, urethane casting, even injection molding. When you use Fictive, you get access to a global partner network, super fast cycle times, guided expertise all along your journey, and consistent quality. You can even track the status of your production, including photos of your parts, inspection data, all directly through the Fictive platform. Use the link and the code below in the description for a discount off your first order, and it helps out the channel if you do so. Okay, welcome back. So what we're going to do is we've got both of our PLAs here. So here's the scenario or scenario, depending on how you do it. But you've got, so like gray, like this gray, I've got my cop, my, my default profile tuned to this gray. Cause I print this gray day after day after day after day. Right. I, I order the, the same, the same maker, the same spool, the same, everything. I know how this, how that thing typically prints and how it prints well for my printers. I've done my temperature towers and all that good stuff. It prints great at 200. This red that I have is a little bit more finicky. I know that if I print it at 200, I tend to get a little bit of under extrusion and it likes to print a bit hotter. So in here, you still have the options to modify your presets for your filament. So if I want to run over here and click this guy, I can actually come to the filament tab and I can change my temperatures, right? So 210, 210. And now I can go to save it and I can just name it red and hit okay. Now, one thing you need to go back and check is this for sure changed to red, the one we wanted to. Go back and double check this because this one you can see the red is highlighted and you may not want that. So if you reselect your generic one there and your red is still here, right? So now you've got two temperature profiles based on that, um, based on those two filaments that you have loaded into this, uh, to this project. Now you can for sure add a third, add a fourth, add a whatever, right? If you hit the plus button here and you want to say, well, I want to do yellow. Okay. Let's head back over into the slice. Let's pull this down. Let's say from here, we're going to change filament and we're going to add yellow here. Reslice the plate. And now we've got a three color cube, right? So again, it's, it's defaulting to my default, uh, my, 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 my default profile for PLA. If you've got yellow that prints at 195 and you want to change it, you walk through the same process we just did. Um, so easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, if I go ahead and delete this one and let's just stick it to the two. Now you do, I mean, you can see from the drop down here, you have the option to select other types of materials. So if you want to start with pet G and then go to PLA, if you want to do ABS and maybe ASA, you know, whatever, 
um, you know, you just kind of, I guess, experiment. I've done some, you know, mismatched material layering before, and it doesn't turn out necessarily the way you think, right? You gotta think how things print. I mean, you think it's all just melting plastic together, but it always it doesn't always come out the way you think it does. So, um, I encourage you to experiment. Um, just, you know, keep the bar low as far as expectations go. Um, so there you go. I mean, that's really the bulk of the filament change stuff. Um, the only other thing that I would comment on in that, with that regard, if you're going to do two different types of material completely, like PLA and PETG. So I like, so my PETG obviously prints hotter, right? I print that around 230. So I can come up here and I can change this to PETG. And if I use my presets and look at my filament, it's grabbing all of my temperatures, no problem. But I also like to print it slower. But your speed settings are here in your processes, right? You you doesn't you can't necessarily change your process your speeds at least depending on what you have selected up here. That's the only sort of um, oddball thing that I'm finding in this case. So if I normally run my PLA at 60 millimeters per second, and I normally run my PETG around 45 to 50 millimeters per second. Um, I might just for the entire print slow this whole thing down to 50 and to account for both of those different, those dissimilar materials. Again, this is for you to go, um, go experiment with. So, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you like this content, please like subscribe, drop a comment. Um, I do again, want to say thank you to the sponsor tonight, Fictive. If you're going to use Fictive, which I encourage that you do use the link in the description, you'll get 10% off your first order. Thanks again. We're going to see you soon.